We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. First question, just to kind of warm things up a little bit. You've probably heard this a lot already today, but why Wolf Alice? And did they come to you? Did you go to them? How did this all start? To be honest, it started a long time ago because we, we had the idea to make a film like this, I don't know, like 15 years ago. We made a film called uh, 24 Hour Party People. And whilst we were making it, the first thing was like, you know, it was great fun to make, but we were recreating bands. So like, whilst we were making it, we were thinking it'd be great if we actually like did a film with real bands rather than actors pretending to be bands. And then we, we showed the film in, in New York and afterwards, sort of, sort of late night in a bar, we met up with Ash, which is a band that at that time was like endlessly touring. And they were telling us about their life. And it seemed like, you know, really romantic in a way that they were, you know, traveling from city to city, like sort of, you know, sort of like medieval, sort of traveling minstrels and playing with, you know, new crowds each night. And, the, and, and they were kind of really kind of, that kind of classic touring band. And it just felt like that would be a really great world to, you know, to sort of, to try and capture on film. And then, you know, eventually, we talked about, talked about various times, you know, eventually sort of 15 years later, we had like six months where we, we felt, we, okay, we're free, we could make that film we've been talking about for a long time. And so then we started looking for Wolf Alice. So, you know, and, uh, you know, so it was really that way around. It was that, okay, let's look for a band that is living on a bus, that is young, that tours a lot, that is a good kind of live band, and that is, uh, is touring Britain, you know, in this six month period. Brilliant. And I'm kind of glad you mentioned 24 Hour Party People as well, because there's another older film of yours that I thought this kind of more closely resembled, Nine Songs. Uh -huh. And <laughs> something about that kind of, almost the sexual element of that and here, there's that, they're both kind of quite important in both films. Um, what do you think is the relationship between music and sex? What is it about those two things that you think marries well on film? I don't know about, I don't know about music and sex. I do think that you know, music is brilliant for capturing the kind of feeling of being in love or whatever, about, about relationships, you know, um, you know, in a way that film isn't. You know, I think when film deals with the kind of sort of love stories you know, in the most kind of broad sense, it's, it's really bad because a film always wants to put a narrative into it. You know, so with Nine Songs, it was like, okay, let's not have any narrative. Let's just try and like, have, see two people together in bed and, and, then, and, then, and then let's see if we can get some of the atmosphere. It's a guy looking back on this relationship, which is already over, and uh, just see if we can capture some of the atmosphere of what it's like to be, to be in a relationship and to be looking back nostalgically at it. And I think songs have been at that. Most love songs, you know, really kind of make you feel like you, that you sort of really identify with the feelings and the emotion. And, uh, and there is no story, because I don't think there is really a story in a, in a relationship in a way, you're either in love or you're not. But a film always wants to construct some sort of, you know, kind of complicated plot that stops you, you know, being together or whatever, and then finally you end up happily ever after. Mm. So I think uh, music is, you know, I think, it, you know, there is something about the kind of lyrical nature of music that is much better at capturing emotion than film is. Brilliant. And kind of talking about the fact-fiction divide of the film a little mm. bit, because obviously it's kind of part documentary, but you do add your own kind of fictional characters on top of that. Uh, why do you think it was important to add that kind of extra fictional element to it? I mean, I think, you know, I think if you're doing a film like this, obviously, you know, if you want to, you want to do a film about band touring, it's, uh, there's loads of stuff that is massively better to be a real band, to be a documentary following a real band. You know, the, all the music side, all the, all the excitement of the, of the fans, or the, you know, the, 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 all those kind of public aspects of being on tour, public aspects of being in a band, uh, and even from the crew point of view, like seeing a real crew working in real venues, you know, 3,000 people mad for them each night, that is clearly all much more vivid and interesting in, doc in a documentary when you're just observing a real situation. But, it, you know, the starting point was like the, the, that world of being on tour is what I was interested in. And I think, you know, like, I, you know, we go away and make films quite a lot. And obviously, you know, if someone was doing a fil film about us making a film, you see us on set and working, whatever, it'd be very boring, but you see that bit. But what you don't see is all the private aspects. And, and obviously when you're away w working, a lot of the stuff that is important to you is private. So for me, it's like, it's not really about putting a fiction thing in, you know, and it's more like I wanted a personal, intimate bit of the film as well. I wanted to, to try and create a way of like, feeling like you were on the tour with them. And it seemed to me that for that, we needed to have, you know, people, actors, who, who we could like be with when they're by themselves, we could be with when they're becoming friends, we could be with them when they're missing their families or whatever, we could be with them when they're making love, which I didn't expect the real band to, you know, it wouldn't be possible in the documentary side. So it's not really about having like one strand that's fictional and their story and the other bit that's documentary, it's more like trying to, trying to, trying to see the tour from, from a kind of, from a sort of an individual point of view to have a kind of intimate space in that tour as well as a public space. Brilliant. Uh, how did you find being on the road yourself? Is that something, had you been on tour with the band before? How, did you think it changed your plans for the film at all? Or? Um, 
I hadn't been on tour before with a band, uh, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> It didn't help that I had a, a broken I had a broken toe and I'd had to have an operation and put a, a metal piece in my toe because I'd broken my toe. So I had a sort of special shoe on for the first two and a half, two weeks of the shoe. So I was like hobbling around the bus and uh, the, you know, we were living on the bus as well. And so your bunk is literally, I, I was on the bottom bunk, so the, bu the, the top of my bunk, like I was like on the floor and then the, the, the ceiling would be like three, two inches above your nose when you woke up. We, and I found that I could sleep when the bus was moving, but I couldn't sleep when the bus parked. And unfortunately, it was a tour of Britain, not America. So most of the bus journeys were sort of an hour and a half. And then you'd wake up at like five in the morning or whatever in the center of Manchester, where it was open. You can't, and basically that would be it. You'd have to kind of get up and wander around the center of Manchester until someone opened for breakfast. Brilliant. And kind of just one final question to wrap up. I think especially with your filmmaking style as well, how kind of freeform you are a lot of the time. Uh, is there any tips you would have for someone just starting out in filmmaking? Um, I think, you know, just shoot stuff. You know, I think, that, you know, think about what you want to do. Don't think about what you think someone else wants you to do. You know, don't think about what will be, what will get you your break or what, you know, or what someone else wants. Just you got to think about what do I want to make? What do I think will be interesting? And then have a go at making it.